Hello. I'm Humphrey Solomon Jr. Welcome to my channel. Our today's video presentation is about finding the polynomial functions given the roots or zeros of the function. Before we continue, please watch my other tutorials about math lessons, and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Now, to be able to use the roots of a polynomial function, it would be necessary for us to understand first what are zeros or roots of a function. These are basically the x-intercepts of the function. The values of x in the function where the graph crosses the x-axis. Shown in this graph, we have the x-intercepts as negative 2, 1, and 3. So now, here in example number 1, let's try to find the equation of the function using these values of x-intercepts. Having these values of x, we can equate each quantity to zero by transposing the numbers to the left side of the equations. In doing so, this changes the sign for each number. And, if we multiply all of them together, it will just become zero. Which actually makes sense, because these are the values of x that makes the function, f of x, equal to zero. Now, multiplying the first two quantities, x plus 2, and x minus 1, using the FOIL method, will give us x squared, plus x, minus 2. As we continue to multiply this quantity to, x minus 3, we will get x cubed, minus 2x squared, minus 5x, plus 6, equal to 0. We know that this is actually the function, f of x, and if we want, we can write it on the left side of the equation, so our final answer, the function whose zeros are negative 2, 1, and 3, is f of x, equals, x cubed, minus 2x squared, minus 5x, plus 6. Ok, now we go to example number 2. Let's find a function with radical roots. Suppose we have x equals, 2 plus square root of 3, and x equals, 2 minus square root of 3 as the radical roots. Again, we need to equate these values of x to 0 by transposing the numbers to the left side of the equations. In doing so, this changes the sign again for each number. And, if we multiply these quantities, it will just become 0. Also, notice that, we can write each quantity as binomials. And what we have now, is a special product, the sum and difference of binomials. This will give us, the difference of two squares. The square of the first term minus the square of the second term. We can expand the square of the first term into, x squared, minus 4x, plus 4, and we can also simplify the square of the second term, as minus 3. Simplifying further, we can get, x squared, minus 4x, plus 1. Again, if we want, we can write this in function notation, our final answer is, f of x, is equal to x squared, minus 4x, plus 1. Our next problem, example number 3, is finding a function with imaginary roots. Suppose we have x equals, 2 plus i, and x equals, 2 minus i. Again, we need to equate these values of x to 0 by transposing the complex numbers to the left side of the equations. In doing so, this changes the sign again for each number. And, if we multiply these quantities, it will just become zero. Also, notice again that, we can write each quantity as binomials. And what we have now, is a special product, the sum and difference of binomials. This will give us again, the difference of two squares. The square of the first term minus the square of the second term, we can expand the square of the first term into, x squared, minus 4x, plus 4, and we can also simplify the square of the second term as plus 1. Simplifying further we can get, x squared, minus 4x, plus 5. Again, if we want, we can write this in function notation, our final answer is, f of x, is equal to x squared, minus 4x, plus 5. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons below. Also, click the bell icon to get notified when I upload my next videos.
Please share this video with your friends to help them learn more in math. Have a nice day.